there is an irrepressible conflict between religion and science and they cannot peaceably occupy the same brain nor the same world while utterly discarding all creeds and denying the truth of all religions there is neither in my heart nor upon my lips a sneer for the hopeful loving and tender souls who believe that from all this discord will result a perfect harmony that every evil will in some mysterious way become a good and that above and over all there is a being who in some way will reclaim and glorify every one of the children of men but for those who heartlessly try to prove that salvation is almost impossible that damnation is almost certain that the highway of the universe leads to hell who fill life with fear and death with horror who curse the cradle and mock the tomb it is impossible to entertain other than feelings of pity contempt and scorn reason observation and experience the holy trinity of science have taught us that happiness is the only good that the time to be happy is now and the way to be happy is to make others so this is enough for us in this belief we are content to live and die if by any possibility the existence of a power superior to and independent of nature shall be demonstrated there will then be time enough to kneel until then let us stand erect notwithstanding the fact that infidels in all ages have battled for the rights of man and have at all times been the fearless advocates of liberty and justice we are constantly charged by the church with tearing down without building again the church should by this time know that it is utterly impossible to rob men of their opinions the history of religious persecutions fully establishes the fact that the mind necessarily resists and defies every attempt to control it by violence the mind necessarily clings to old ideas until prepared for the new the moment we comprehend the truth all erroneous ideas are of necessity cast aside a surgeon once called upon a poor cripple and kindly offered to render him any assistance in his power the surgeon began to discourse very learnedly upon the nature and origin of disease of the curative properties of certain medicines of the advantages of exercise air and light and of the various ways in which health and strength could be restored these remarks were so full of good sense and discovered so much profound thought and accurate knowledge that the cripple becoming thoroughly alarmed cried out do not i pray you take away my crutches they are my only support and without them i should be miserable indeed i am not going said the surgeon to take away your crutches i am going to cure you and then you will throw the crutches away yourself for the vagaries of the clouds the infidels propose to substitute the realities of the earth for the superstition the splendid demonstrations and achievements of science and for the theological tyranny the chainless liberty of thought we do not say we have discovered all that our doctrines are the all in all in truth we know of no end to the development of man we cannot unravel the infinite complications of matter and force the history of one monad is as unknown as that of the universe one drop of water is as wonderful as all the seas one leaf as all the forests and one grain of sand as all the stars we are not endeavoring to chain the future but to free the present we are not foregoing fetters for our children but we are breaking those our fathers made for us we are the advocates of inquiry of investigation and thought this of itself is an admission that we are not perfectly satisfied with all our conclusions philosophy has not the egotism of faith while superstition builds walls and creates obstructions science opens all the highways of thought we do not pretend to have circumnavigated everything and to have solved all difficulties 
But we do believe that it is better to love men than to fear gods, that it is grander and nobler to think and investigate for yourself than to repeat a creed. We are satisfied that there can be but little liberty on earth while men worship a tyrant in heaven. We do not expect to accomplish everything in our day, but we want to do what good we can, and to render all the service possible in the holy cause of human progress. We know that doing away with gods and supernatural persons and powers is not an end. It is a means to an end, the real end being the happiness of man. Felling forests is not the end of agriculture. Driving pirates from the sea is not all there is of commerce. We are laying the foundations of a grand temple of the future, not the temple of the gods, but of all the people, wherein with appropriate rites will be celebrated the religion of humanity. We are doing what little we can to hasten the coming of the day when society shall cease producing millionaires and mendicants, gorged indolence and famished industry, truth in rags and superstition robed and crowned. We are looking for the time when the useful shall be the honorable, and when reason, throned upon the world's brain, shall be the king of kings and the god of gods. End of Ingersoll's Lecture on the Gods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Read for you by Ted DeLorme in Fort Mill, South Carolina during April 2007.